also. Welcome to those on Facebook joining us. Uh, we're pretty excited to announce and introduce our new Factory Talk Brew Solutions. Uh, we actually are doing our global launch in conjunction with Sorry Tech Ed. It doesn't get any better than that, so we're pretty excited. Um, during this presentation, I'll go through a little bit about the brewing market and an overview. There's some really interesting dynamics happening right now in the brewing market, so we'll share a little bit around that topic. Talk a little bit about the customer and the brewer's challenges and how we believe Factory Talk uh, brew can help with those, solve those challenges and uh, uh, really help with production of beer. Talk a little bit about the solution itself, go through it, kind of high level architecture, answer any questions you may have, and then we'll talk about our delivery and support model. Uh, before we get started though, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Greg Hood. I've been with Roth Automation for about 20 years. I'm currently uh, managing a business that uh, does industry-specific applications in a formal product manner. Uh, Factory Talk Brew is one of them. We also have Factory Talk Craft Brew, which we have session PR23 if you're interested in our Factory Talk Craft Brew solution, as well as our Rapid Line Integration solution. We're talking about Rapid and SYS13 this week, so make sure you have those solutions as well. For, uh, for you, I got some questions. Do we have any brewers in the house? Large commercial brewers, regional, global? No brewers. All right, integrators. All right. Consumers. <laughs> uh, we always get a lot of that. We always get a bunch of hands around because consumers. So. so I think everybody has an interest in beer. Uh, for me, the market's pretty uh, interesting right now. First of all, it's very attractive. Um, the market itself is the, probably the largest, uh, in fact, I think not probably, it is the largest portion of the food and beverage industry. Um, it, it's got a pretty good growth, however, recently growth has slowed or become, uh, uh, you know, in the, in the small single digits. Uh, that's for brew overall, or for alcoholic beer overall, but there's a kind of an interesting dynamic that I want to talk about, and that's craft brew. How many of you are aware, or even if you're not aware, it makes sense when you think about how you, your consumer behavior is, that craft brew is growing at like twice the rate of the brew market itself, right? So, although it's also slowed down a little bit, we're getting it, it was, it was killing it a couple years ago, but it's still got really nice growth going on. So what we're seeing and what I want to kind of point out when we talk about large regional global, uh, global brewers and when we talk about their challenges, we'll see is that it's a, it's, a, it's a market dynamic that makes brewing beer a little bit different when we're talking about production. And uh, a lot of the, the challenges that those brewers face will go through and will actually um, explain to you that we designed and looked at Factory Talk Brew to help solve specific challenges within the brewing industry. And we think, we think we've got a wonderful product for that. Um, but before we get started, so if you can imagine, if craft brew is growing at, at least double the market, then what's happening? Right, the market's growing here, craft brew's growing here. How, how can that be? They gotta be taking share, right? If the market overall isn't the same growth as craft, that means craft is taking share from who? The big, the big guys, right? So what happens then? <coughs> Another dynamic I wanna talk about is typically when craft brews, brewers get really big, they get popped by the big guys. So we're seeing a lot of different market dynamics, but out of all of that, for the global and regional brewers, what they have to become is more agile, right? They have to, they, they're losing a little bit of the benefits of economy of scale when they're producing beer, because they have to react to these craft flavors, and they themselves are brewing more different, you know, more different, different kind of brands, right? So the batches are getting smaller, they have to be able to switch, and and they still need to produce uh, large volumes, but, 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 but in a very agile purpose. So that's kind of uh, the market overview. So let's talk about how that mark, the, those market dynamics really pose a lot of challenges. So if, if you wanted to say, hey, let, let's look at the, the brewing folks. What is their biggest market challenge today? It's really becoming efficient, right? It's all about efficiency if we took them all in. We broke them down a little bit about how to help, how we believe uh, factory Talk Brew can help them become efficient, and that's through information-driven exposures of e and efficiencies, right? So really 
good information, good sight into the production. And in fact, the Utah Peru out of the box provides that. Rapidly changing technologies, right? So this is not unique to brewing. We all are adjusting to technologies. Managing risk, and then adapting to production demands. That's that agility I was talking about. So OEM, a little bit different challenges here. You know, they always have cost pressure. Any OEMs in the house? No OEMs, all right. Um, re, uh, they like to uh, engineer and reuse, they need reliability, and they have to be able to differentiate themselves. So, um, you know, those two challenges culminates into how we believe a lot well we can solve them. And that's number one, for regional and global brewers, the most important thing is that they have a standard solution, not a custom solution that looks different wherever they go. They need a standardized solution. It needs to be intuitive. Right? It needs to include plant-wide operations. It needs to be open. Data flow and information needs to be available um, at the time, but also to be shared throughout the enterprise. And of course, the architectures need to support the enterprise and help them achieve the connected enterprise that we always talk about here at Rockwell. So let's talk about factory talk brew and how we position it. A couple things is we believe that with factory top brew, you can significantly lower your design, and therefore for every project, you can increase your return on investment. Um, there's some efficiencies we'll go through uh, during the product overview. Um, typically, uh, the one of the major questions I always get, so I'll, I'll kind of ask and answer, right, is that where do you use factory top brew and where do you use factory top craft brew? And, you know, if you like numbers, if you're a numbers guy and you want numbers, if you're looking at five barrels to about 100 barrels, right, for a craft brew or factory top craft brew can probably be applied there. But it's not always that clean. It's a little gray. You could have a 60 barrel craft brewer that's heavily automated, has a lot of subsystems that the factory top craft brew solution doesn't cover. And once this enterprise level solution, then we would leverage factory top craft brew there as well. Um, it really depends on the challenges of the brewer and the areas that they want to automate. Okay. So from an overview, what, what is factory top brew after all? So it is a product solution, formal product solution from Rockwell. It's S88 compliant, standard module application at the control level, right? Uh, what's nice about Factory Talk Brew is it's not a software solution, it's not a control solution, and then you bundle a bunch of stuff together and make it work. It's an actual solution that goes from the level three all the way down to level two, right? So, um, it is an integrated server, uh, uh, server and controller-based batching and sequencing, okay? Um, does it need to have connection to the server to complete batches? So it, once downloaded and started, the controller maintains all that it needs to complete the batch. Um, it does eliminate the need for custom coding within Studio 5000 or Logix at all. No need there. It's really a configuration-based solution, and we'll get into how that, how that happens. Um, all of that together enables us to get to design projects, review projects, and get projects started according to the PIDs and FDS correctly the first time and, 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 and the more efficient. So. Some of the features, how we get that done, it does come with a web application. Um, it's an intuitive design place where you would configure your recipes, your sequences, your routings, your tank profiles for your tank farm. Um, we do use Factory Talk View SE for the HMI, of course. Uh, of course, we have the standard Rockwell libraries. You'll see on the um, Enter the architecture screen. We do uh, support Plantex version 3.5. Uh, Web-enabled reporting and recipe management, as well as on-the-fly recipe management within the controller at the controller level for production that's happening today. Right? If you wanted to, to be updated as a master recipe, you would have to at some point get to the server. But you can interact with the recipes during runtime. It is enabled uh, because all of our uh, reporting is HTML based 5 and SQL Server. It does, it does work on any mobile device, no problem for reporting. 
Um, and we do have a defined interface to our uh, historian products as well. Here's an example of the HMI screens, some of the uh, areas that we cover as well as how they look on the, in the product themselves. Um, we have all the systems required for the entire brewing process covered. Any subsystem can also be configured through the application tool because that the, the way that we design this solution is that you have base units, you have devices, parameters, and you can configure them in any fashion you want to apply to any system or subsystem that you'll find on the process side of the brew. Here's a couple examples, uh, brew house, some water systems, CIP, fermentation and cellars, filtration, but as I said, you can configure and apply this to any brewery design. System configuration is done through that web application, which I talked about. This is a kind of a screen capture to see what it looks like. So you would go in and uh, there's full deployment guides uh, for when we design the system. The end user never has to go here unless they want to make a change. Uh, it is available all the time, but um, uh, you would go in and define your recipe and your unit parameters, your devices, all your procedures and equipment modules right there in the web uh, utility. Also for for wrap, it, everybody understand when, when I, and then of course your tank cooling and pro, uh, recipe profiles for your tank farm as well. Once it's all configured, um, you, you, you simply download it to the controller, configure the HMI screens using our libraries, and, and you're off, right? Um, this is an example of what the overview screen for the brew house would look like. Um, if you see across the top, I know it's a little bit of an eye chart, but there's area, unit config, system config, recipe, batch, and procedures outlined there. Um, each area in our world equates to a controller. Okay? And we would, uh, uh, we'll talk a little bit about controllers and how they work uh, with the solution in a minute. So basically, the, the takeaway here is we want to go from PIDs to full FDS through efficient processes. <laughs> All right, any questions up to this point? All right, thanks guys. Reporting, let's look at reporting. So out of the box and uh, during the configuration, you can identify the parameters that you want to report on. So there's no, no report customization. You don't have to go in and figure out where the data is at and get the tags. We provide an install for the database. We also provide during configuration a checkbox where is the parameter that you're configuring now reportable or not during the design. Um, based on those configurations, your reports are available. We provide these standard out of the box reports, batch reports. You can configure any trend to be on that report. You can see all of your batch history. You can have batch comparisons. CIP reports, again, configurable for any trend during that uh, design phase, which I spoke about earlier as well as tank cooling reports. Uh, as always, though, live trends are available in the HMI as well. System architectures. So factory talk brew, uh, web application, uh, is, you, you know, it'll run on either Internet Explorer, IE, or Chrome. I think uh, IE is version 11. SQL Server 2012 or above is required. Plan PAX version of library that we talked about earlier, that's version 3.5. We also support USC version 8.1 and above. From a controller's uh, prospect, L74 or above is what we recommend. V24 or above is supported by Factory Talk Brew. One thing about controllers, we do recommend, uh, not so much technically, but for ease of management, a controller per process area. Um, but the real constraint there is controller memory. So if you wanted, wanted to, you know, if you could fit, depending on the brewery, the brew house with grain handling, you could actually do that, right? It's not a technical limitation, it's just a recommendation for uh, system management. From an IT computer server requirement, we follow the same guidelines for factory talk brew, uh, brew that we do for PAN PAX, right? So, refer to the plan PX manuals, pages 27 to 47, and it has lists out all the IT requirements from the, on the uh, computer side servers. Optional components that can be used, you can leverage our plan PX virtual image templates, as well as uh, Factory Talk Historian version 4.0, as I mentioned earlier. 
Any questions about the architecture? I knew there was. Yes, sir. Um, how are you going to keep up with changes on Plan PDX releases uh, tied into this solution? Uh, like the 4.5 is coming in yes. a month. Yes, so what we'll do is we'll lag component releases just like Plan PX lags V releases, same thing. Mm -hmm. So we'll pick up, you know, we'll try to pick up based on functionality and, you know, we can pick it up typically 90 to six months after release. We go through our testing, formalize it. Sometimes there'll be a factory talk brew release to include component upgrades if required, but sometimes it'll just be a supporting notification that, hey, Plant X 4.5 is supported by the current version of Factory Talk right. Group. So that's how we <coughs> handle that. Any other questions about the architecture? Anything that I've talked to this far? Any questions online? Not so far. All right. Let's move on then. So how do we how do you get it? How do you deliver it? So we are delivering Factory Talk Brew ourselves. Um, Rockwell Automation has over 15 years in brewing. Um, although this product is new, a formal product is new for us, we have been doing breweries for a long, long time, right? So it's just been custom solutions. Uh, now we have a formal product solution. We'll deliver it. Um, the delivery will be, each delivery method will be determined regionally, right? Uh, for uh, certified SIs, SPs, or OEMs, that'll be determined. They will be select and they'll have a criteria that they have to conform to. Um, we will provide detailed PFDs and SDs to the brewers. Um, we actually, as part of the product release, we have a lot of documentation that helps manage the project flow as well. What do you need to get started? PIDs, interviews with the brewmasters. What, you know, at this phase, what do you do? You create the, you set up the configuration of Factory Talk Brew uh, web utility. You go back, you verify FDS. But it, we, we, we kind of outline the project flow and we'll provide all that. Uh, from a documentation standpoint, just like any other product, there's a user manual uh, for design and deployment. There's also a deployment manual that I just talked about where we give guidance on project execution. Because as, you know, it's not a shrink wrap product, it's an engineer product, and so delivery is as just important as the product itself. So we wanted to make sure that we have everything covered so that we can guarantee great customer experience for factory talk group. How are we gonna support it after the project's over? Uh, through our TechConnect program, we will be offering an application level support. Um, this will be the only option for Factory Talk Brew. It is optional, we highly recommend it. Um, our folks over at, uh, in our uh, tech support community will have intimate knowledge of the application and be able to provide specific uh, support for our customers. Okay, that's, that's, that's where I'm at. Let's open it up for questions now. I'm pretty excited, everybody excited about it? You been waiting for this? All right. Yes, sir. You have a question. I'm gonna hit you with a hard one up front. All right. How does this compare with the semen brew? It's way better. <laughs> uh, the question was, how does this compare with Siemens? So Siemens Bromat, one of our major competitors for Factory Talk Brew. Um, we believe it's better. Um, Siemens Bromat has had a kind of a blessing and a curse for a long time. They didn't have a lot of competition to speak of at this level, um, but their system is a little bit long in the tooth. We believe the way we've innovated around it with the modern interfaces and capabilities that we have a, 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 a foot up on Bromat. Is Craft Brew another option that, the reason I ask the question is I have a lot of local craft brewers and they're using the Siemens package. Oh, the PC, the PCF7? Yeah. Yeah, with a, kind of a Brahma light kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, so in fact, it's um, it's interesting. No, I'm not sure about uh, um, how many craft brewers are there, but we've already indeed, we released for customer order Factory Top Craft Brew in January, and um, in, by February, we had already had a PCF7 Brahma conversion. So um, it was a great project, and I'm hoping that we'll have a, uh, the customer present at PISO that's been submitted, so you'll hear more about that at PISO next year. 
So yeah, we should be able to just place that with the craft brew at the, at the craft brew level as well. Yes, sir. Uh, so since you're leveraging SC88 at the controller level, is yes. this all utilizing Phase Manager to be in line with what you typically would do with SC88? Yeah, so the question was, since we're, we're doing S88, does this leverage phase manager, which is what you would typically do with S88? And the question is, <clears throat> there is a phase manager, a sequence manager, but it's not the logics sequence manager for release one. Okay. That's something we're looking out for roadmap. map. It's some time constraints to market. Uh, we, want, we, went out, we have Factory Tough Brew has its own sequencing management that happens. Um, so yes and no, I think would be the answer to that question. Okay. Right. Yes, we comply with S88. Yes, we have sequence manager, but it's not logic sequence manager. So the follow-up then is that, it, are you kind of leveraging some of what you would see in FP batch with this product, or is this product kind of a complete new ground up built from what you would see in FP batch and FP batch? Okay. Whew, that was, a, that was a long question. So let me restate the question for everybody. He's saying, okay, so with that said, are we using factory top batch or is factory top brew the new factory top batch? Again, a yes or no answer to that question. Right. So we are not using factory top batch with release one. We will be looking at roadmap for adding it as an option for those who desire it. it factory top brew is absolutely not the new and coolest factory top batch. Factory top batch is uh, a beautiful product and does a broad range of, bra uh, of batching. Uh, however, for brewing specifically, Factory Top Brew has its own batching, again, out of release one. Um, we may add that as an option, but we don't believe from the customer's perspective, the brewers, the functionality for Factory Top Batch didn't come to the top to make release one for us. Right. Okay, so that's kind of where we're at. I hope that answers your question well. Any more questions? Yes. The uh, factory top brew is a software side of things. And you, you recommend the hardware with the controller and stuff like that. Do you provide a package with hardware and software complete? Oh, great question. Thank you for that. So the question was factory top brew is a software people. We recommend controllers. Do we provide the full package? Factory top brew has catalog numbers. We do it's not it does not include the hardware. So it includes and it does not include the view SC. So you have factory top, craft brew catalog, USC catalog, and hardware catalog when you purchase them. Any other questions? Uh, check one more time. Any questions online? No. Okay, I got a question for you. Um, how many of out there, you, I know we don't have any brewers, but how many of your integrators have uh, Brewers, uh, regional and large craft brewers asking for something. And, and what are you hearing? Is um, it, do you I think? Got, yeah, I've got a bunch of little craft brewers and they're just starting to automate. Okay. So we're trying to push them in a direction. Like okay, so you're on the craft side, yeah. what your experience is. Yes, yes sir, do you say? For the most part, yeah. We have some large brewers as well, but a lot of them are just Directly into Brahma, yeah, yeah. And a lot of the, you know, when, we, when we're looking at the large regional brewers, um, there, there hasn't been an answer, right, in a formal format. Like I said, we've been doing custom solutions for many large brewers for a long time. Uh, but some of them were asking us as well for a formal product solution, you know, thus the birth of uh, factory top brew. So we've gotten a lot of input from our big customers. So we think, and one thing I want to make sure everybody takes away from today is that we really did design factory top brew to the specific requirements and needs of the brewmaster as well as the operations of a brewery. So we really believe we have a specific targeted um, um, solution that answers the, the, you know, the brewer's challenges today. So we're pretty excited about it. Yes, sir. Are you doing any uh, uh, crop automation YouTube videos on the brew solution just to kind of, so we can point customers that direction? Yeah, so, so you mean like uh, training type videos or commercial videos? Commercial. Yeah, in fact, we're actually doing, everybody familiar with Manufacturing Happy Hour? Have you seen that from Rockwell yet? 
go on YouTube and search Manufacturing Happy Hour. It, there's a, a and I, I know I'll mess his name up, but uh, one of our sales guys out of the West region has kind of started this up. It's a great, he does about five minutes with two guys sitting down enjoying happy hour talking about a specific product from Rockwell. And we're going to be doing that with factory shop brew and uh, craft brew. So you'll have that. Um, but there's also other videos in the making. And um, for you, Ben, and for uh, Rockwell folks, there's a full launch kit plan as well as demo process and everything for factory shop brew. Right. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> for large brew houses that... Um what kind of adoption or when does it make sense to bring this solution to them or if they're looking for it, if it's going to be a new facility or if it's going to be a uh, kind of retrofit of the uh, very old uh, facility, wh when does it make sense uh, uh, to talk about this? Yeah, as, you know, as the, it, it makes sense to talk to it at every one of those phases you talked about. So you can apply factory talk brew and a brownfield as well as in a greenfield. It's perfect if it's a greenfield, right? If it's a brownfield, then you have to look at the, you, you know, are they at the right level of hardware? Do they have the networking capabilities? Is it, is it, is there, are they asking for a migration, perhaps, of some of a PLC5 or view, RSView32 migration? At that point's the time to talk about factory talk brew, right? Um, so, so really it applies in any way, at, you know, during any time, brownfield or brownfield. The way we've commercially packaged Factory Talk Brew as well is that we do licensing based on the amount of units, tanks, and, and routing or piping, piping routes required, right? So if you get a customer that says, hey, I want to redo my, my grain handling, but that's all the budget I have for this year, you can still apply Factory Talk Brew for just that one area. So, so perfect for brown fields as well. Any other questions? All right, I'm standing between you and lunch. So if there's no more questions, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. Thank you for your attention. Please make sure you